All right, welcome back to a new touch designer tutorial. And in this one, we're going to look at this uh, generative brush stroke. And um, so this isn't actually something you can like draw with your mouse or anything. This is really like generated over time. So if I just uh, like let this start from, from the beginning, this is just using feedback and um, drawing a circle over time. So this is inspired by uh, me just drawing on a paper and also um, this thing, which is called an N, and so, and so, I don't know how to pronounce that, which is like this Zen circle you're probably familiar with. So it's basically just this circle you put on the brush once and just go around. So that's what I kind of tried to recreate uh, in uh, with this sketch. So uh, as it's generative, it's going to look different every time, and there's a lot of a lot of stuff you can do to tweak this, and uh, we're using instancing to create this. All right, so as usual, I will start from scratch and this will require uh, quite a bit of a setup. All right, so let's start with a circle, a circle stop. And um, we don't really need to change anything about it. Let's just add a noise. And um, we don't, we just need to like make the amplitude here a lot stronger, like 10. And um, then let's add a transform and make the whole thing smaller, so like 0 0.01. And um, then we can add a geo from here. We're also gonna need a camera and a render. And I'm gonna add a null from here. Let's actually just go ahead and change the resolution. I'm gonna make this a bit higher than usual, so like 2000 by 2000. And um, I'm going to call this BG as usual, display that in the background. And uh, I'm going to add a transform to make a colorful background. So I'm going to change the alpha to one comp over background color to on. And I'm going to change this to like 0 0.85, 0 0.85 and like 0.9. Uh, so we have like this sort of bluish gray background color. Cool. I also, uh, this is already black, but just to be in control of the color, I'm going to add a constant and uh, make this black again. And I'm going to add a little feedback loop and a composite. Like a feedback and a composite and just change this to add. And let's just drag this back onto the feedback. Let's just bypass these for now so we can see what's going on. Uh, better. All right, we don't need to see all of these viewers. Um, so <clears throat> what we need to do now is to create an instance in network. All right, so as you might have guessed already, this is all based on noise. So I'm going to add a noise top and I'm going to change the resolution to a thousand by one. So we just have this thin line of one pixel height and a thousand pixels width. And I'm going to change the pixel format to 32-bit float mono. We just have one channel, so we can just use mono. But as we're like, need, as we need to like map these in 3D space, we need to have 32-bit float. All right, I'm going to change the scale here to six, and I'm going to animate this. So abs time dot seconds times like 0.1. And I'm gonna go here and uh, we don't actually need any harmonics. And I'm gonna go down with the offset as well. So it should so look something like this, maybe change the seed. <laughs> um, and let's go ahead and add a ramp from here. So we're adding a ramp from here because uh, we wanna use this ramp as a TX value. And we have set the resolution here already, so we can just like pipe that in here and now we get the same resolution. And now from here we can use a math. And I'm gonna change the range to like 0.4, from zero to 0.4, and I'm gonna add a null and call this TX. Let's now go to our geo and turn on instancing and use TX for the translate OP and then use the R channel on a translate X. Let's actually all go, also go to the camera and change this to R for graphic. Right, so um, what we now want to do is we want to go to our geo and we want to be able to like um, 
move this around like this, like a clock. And um, we want to start from the top. And also we don't want to like have this be stick at zero because if we look at the reference picture, there's like a huge white part in the center. And we want to only draw at some point there. So we can like set the pivot to uh, one and the translation to like minus one or like, you know, go a bit down like 0 0.7, 0 0.7, something like that. So now if I uh, move this around, you can see it moves around uh, with like a, a space in, in, the, in the center. So <clears throat> let's actually set up the, um, the LFO that's controlling all of this. So I'm going to add the LFO here. I'm gonna come back to the, to the instancing network. Um, I'm gonna change this to ramp and like make this quite a low frequency, so like 0.05. And I'm um, also gonna like make this bigger and like uh, orange or something, so we know it's a bit more important than other operators. Um, right, so let's now add a math from here and a null, which I'm gonna call rotate. And this math, let's change the range to 0 to 360, so it's like a full circle. And now we can add that here. So now if I pulse this or reset this, you can see it always starts there. Uh, I wanted to start at the top, so I need to like add minus 90 in the expression here. So if I now restart this, it always starts at the top. And for me, it's fine that it's going uh, counterclockwise. Uh, I actually like that more in this case. I'm also gonna add a keyboard in so I can easily reset this uh, and just use that channel here. And now we want to look at the feedback loop. Uh, if I just unbypass these, you can now see we're like drawing this onto the screen. I also want to, I also want to be able to reset the feedback loop with my keyboard, uh, but I also want to like reset it once the circle has uh, like gone around fully. So I don't just want to use this channel, but I'm going to use a little, like we could use a trigger, but I don't like the trigger, it doesn't work. It, it rarely works the way I want it to. So I'm just going to use a logic, set it to when off when outside bounds, so just set it to like 0 0.001. So it's only going to be on if it's between 0 and 0 0.001. So if I like reset it, it's shortly going to be on. So I'm just going to make a null from here called this reset. And then let's connect this to the uh, feedback pulse. So if I now restart this, it just goes around like this, and uh, once it, it it has done like a full rotation, it's gonna reset the feedback loop. All right, so let's continue with our instancing network. So let's just see if that was works. Yes, it does. Perfect. Cool. So I'm gonna pause this. Um, what we're mainly doing here is working with alpha, different f forms of alpha in a way. So let's. Um, Add a limit from here and a null. And I'm gonna call this opacity. Well, we, let's actually just call this alpha. And uh, let's go to instant or instance two page and use this uh, as an alpha channel, nope, as uh, the alpha color OP. And let's use the R channel for alpha. So now you're gonna see um, this is already sort of working. So now this is based on, on this noise um, so wherever there is like uh, black here, it's gonna appear as white here. So as no, no, yeah, paint basically. <laughs> okay, and why I have a limit here is so I can like uh, unsmooth this a bit. So I can like change this to round and like two. So it cuts off a bit like harder. I like that. All right. So to make this a bit more interesting, let's just copy this noise and um, let's add a composite here and add that in here. And on the second noise, I'm going to get rid of the uh, scaling here. Actually, let's just make this like two. And I'm um, also gonna change this to like three and uh, change the harmonics to one and uh, change the amplitude to one. So now you can already see this sort of taking effect. So we don't just get like the straight um, 
so the lines as we do here but this is being multiplied with this so we only like get these patches and uh, once it reaches the top it resets and yeah cool so we're getting there um one thing i want to show you here with the uh, offset is uh, it's a really cool thing um when you increase the offset to one you're gonna see uh, there's a lot more paint and if i go down with the offset you're gonna see there's a lot less paint so a cool thing would be like if you think about like if you also look at this there's a bit less paint at the end and there's like these parts here where there's less paint generally it, you know when you like drop the brush onto the paper it's going to be more paint than at the end so um let's animate this so or like, like let's change this so the, in the beginning we have a lot of offset and in the end we have less offset so i'm going to add a math from our lfo and change this to 0.7 and 0.1 and I'm going to add another null and just, let's just call this offset. And I'm going to use this on the noise offset parameter. Cool. So now there's going to be more offset in the beginning. And it's going to get less over time. So you can already see this is sort of like, yeah, there's less lines basically. Okay. Um, I'm going to add a, another instance channel here. So I'm going to add another noise from here. And um, actually, I just want to have the noise of this noise. <laughs> so we're again, as we did in the ramp, we're just using this input as a reference for the size, or the, like the resolution. And uh, on this noise, I'm going to change this to like 1.5. And maybe, yeah, we can leave the harmonics as they are. and. Um, Again, we also want this to be 32-bit float mono. Even though, now we can actually just leave it as input. You know, that's that's also uh, the perk of just putting that in there. Cool, and then I'm going to um, add another null and call this scale. Let's go to our first instance page and use the scale here and just use the R channel on all of them. So we're just adding a bit more dynamic because we're changing um, the scale. We can also go ahead and like drop this this in a second input as well, and then we're slowly getting getting a cooler texture there. All right, we're, we're getting there. Um, one thing I want to do is I want to like also go down with the alpha here because like this alpha is controlling different uh, instances, like uh, or giving different. Um, channel values or different values to different instances so a thousand actually so um right we need to like change the blending here to on uh what we want to do with this alpha is we want to control the, the general alpha so we want to like sort of make this fade out over time as well so to do that i could also just add another math and an offset but i'm actually going to add an animation comp and let's just add a null from here and call this um, opacity and on this animation I'm going to change the play mode to use input index and change the unit to fraction and going to go on edit here let's change this to like opacity and add the channel and now with, by pressing alt I can now add a new uh, parameter here it's actually a shitty color for you to see probably is there better color yes there we go okay so I'm gonna add another point here with out and then just go ahead and drag that up and why I'm doing that is because in the beginning I sort of want this to like fade in as well and I want to like yeah we can actually just leave it this way for now and we can go to our constant here and use our opacity on the alpha now let's see now you can see it's sort of like being sort of fades in with h you can like home this and it's gonna get less over time as you can see you might, might want to like go down with this actually a bit so it like goes goes to zero earlier on cool so uh one last thing is to that really you know is the cherry on top is to add a limit here as well 
going to quantize, changing this to round, and then changing this to like 0.5. And I think that really makes the difference because now it looks like, um, I don't know, sort of like hard scratching more than noise or radiance. I don't know. I really like the, the look of that. Um, to, yeah, there's also another thing actually, that wasn't the last thing, <laughs> uh, another thing I want to show you, and that is that you can also add another noise here, so lots of noises, gotta love noise, and change this to input times noise, change the offset to one, and um, <clears throat> what this is basically doing is adding even more, like, like I don't know, changes the, the look even more. So it just uh, offsets the, because um, right now what we have here is just the, the points all being like neatly aligned from left to right, or, you know, we're just rotating it, but it's left to right. And um, what we're doing with this noise is that we're just like offsetting that a bit and um, changing that. So, so we're adding more of this scratchy feeling. I like the scratchy feeling. <laughs> Uh, well, um, <laughs> God. All right, we can also use um, this as a second input, also a different look, and also we can use this, and then that makes quite a difference, and it's uh, a lot more noisy, a lot. Uh, but I don't like it that much. So this is my favorite. Um, yeah, and you can you can do things like. Uh, you could add another channel for rotation, uh, like so another like noise as in scale and use that for rotation. So I don't know, they, they, these little things here that we can't see, these little things, <laughs> they change over time, like they rotate and that, and that way they create a different texture. And um, yeah, you can, I don't know, do like change all the noises here, uh, Really, it makes a difference, uh, like how you use uh, the second input, especially. It's also interesting. You can uh, also go ahead and make these uh, bigger, so like 0 0.03, for example. And um, it's also different look slightly, but it really gives this grungy kind of texture look. And um, yeah, any kind of post processing, right? Post processing. <laughs> Uh, let's add a displace here <laughs> and a noise and let's just put that in here and change the output to just noise let's go ahead and just change the displace uh, very slightly so like 0 0.0 or like 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and let's just go down with the uh, the amount here let's go up with the period Maybe go down with the harmonics. So this way you can make an even sort of uh, more organic looking circle. So you can like change this or like add more harmonics. Yeah, so this way um, it's even more interesting. And one last thing I want to show you regarding that is that you can add a uh, from here, so every time it resets, we can add like a uh, count and a null. Let's just call this seed. And then we can use this as a seed for the noise. So every time I reset, we're gonna have a different seed. So we're gonna have a different displacing, displacement. Okay, awesome. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you wanna support me, I've got a Patreon and um, yeah, <laughs> if you want to have more cool stuff. And yeah, thanks so much for all your support. And I'll see you on the next video.